from the soul with it. What's going on everybody, the Island Rex coming to you live with yet another video. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be a part of the notification squad. So I gotta talk to y'all about Troy Ave interview with The Breakfast Club. You know, this is his second interview that I've seen on The Breakfast Club. His first interview, I really felt like it was a great interview and him being able to tell his side of the story of everything that happened that night. You know, the shootout that he lost his best friend, Banga. And, you know, the situation that happened with the podcast guy, Tag Stone. And it was really a great interview. I felt like Troy Ave is really misunderstood. Um, I got the chance to meet Troy Ave, you know. And even before, it, it just seemed like he's a, a guy who's pure. Like, his heart is pure. He felt like, you know, when you listen to him talk, he seems very honest. You know, I don't like to use the word real. I say honest, you know, because the whole real fake thing, we all real. We all real people. We're human, you know, so we're real. We're not fake, you know, so this whole real fake thing is just bogus to me. I don't even like the term. So I just say he's, he seems like a real genuine, honest person, you know, seems like he's going to try to help people or try to do things. And, you know, people try to manipulate the things that he say. Even with the the Tupac situation, like even I was like, you know, I had a discussion with one of my friends and I was telling them, I'm like, bro, he never said that he was Tupac. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He said he was the new Pac. He was Tupac. He was Tupac trying to compare himself to Tupac. No, he was just saying that, you know, people switch what he said. And I, I understood exactly what he said, but people here with the media, when they put their spin on it and people have their agendas, like. I'm pretty sure he was talking about Charlemagne because Charlemagne has an agenda. Charlemagne is extremely close to Taxstone. So by him being close to Taxstone, he uses he's very biased. He constantly tries to tear Troy Ave down just so people could look at him as the bad person and paint him as the bad guy. So Taxstone could look like a guy who isn't you know, looked at in the same light, you know, so I just felt like it was just a great interview, but, you know, when I met, when I got the, the chance to meet, you know, Troy Ab, I was in LAX, and, you know, I seen him, and I actually, it felt like I, I knew him almost, you know, and I was like, Troy, like, when I said, I was like, it's Troy, so he kind of looked like we just kind of brushed past, and I was like, that kind of looked like, that's Troy Ab, and I already was listening to his music, I was already listening to uh, Chuck Norris, and I like that, that chick can't show you know, that girl, like, I felt like those was dope records, and, you know, I felt like he was just misunderstood, you know, and, and it's a lot of things that he said in the interview that you can relate to, you know, and the, the media do a great job of taking what you say and putting a spin on it for their own gain, and, you know, to monetize certain things, and I just feel like it's the the world that we live in, you know, he's a guy who promote honesty. Like, you got to think about it. Like, a lot of these rappers promoting drugs, prescription pills, and all these other things. So I want to get into the whole street code thing, the whole street aspect. And, you know, I have family members and people who have lived the street life. You know, my thing is, once you mature and once you grow, like, and, th and this is a conversation that I have with friends and people around you we live in a society where we have to live by these rules you know we point to the society where there's boundaries that that we cannot that it's a it's a certain level that we could go to we get a this certain cachet or we get this certain type of respect about this code that we live by and as long as we live by that code we aren't allowed to open our mind to a lot of things in life so we limit ourselves you know, I mean, when I was watching the interview, like him wearing Versace, like he made a great point in terms of like people are very homophobic, but then they're wear Versace and the person who make Versace is gay. You know, and my thing with Versace, I don't wear those type of name brand clothes, those high end clothes, because a lot of these guys are racist and, and I'm whole I'm done with the whole culture vulture thing. Like that's whack to me now. 
Because if you're a person that's not uplifting your people, if and you're black, let's say you're black, and you're not uplifting your people, you're not helping your people, and you're making music, and you're doing things that's helping destroy your community, and putting things out that's destroying others, then you're a culture vulture as well. And it's even worse because you're that color and you're helping to destroy your own community. So that whole culture vulture thing, that's dead to me. That's whack. Even going back to Charlemagne, you know, he's a person that just seems very dishonest to me, you know, and he's just someone that I cannot support. You know, when he first came in, he was Oh, I'm real and, you know, I'm going to tell people the truth that he just try to destroy people. Like, even Benny Siegel was right. He made Lil Mama cry, you know, which was like, for what? He sat up there and, and tried to make her cry. He, he constantly tries to tear black people down with the whole Floyd Mayweather reading situation. Even if he couldn't read, that's not even something to, to laugh at, to make fun of, you know? Like, it's ignorance, you know? And it's, it's disrespectful. You're going to try to destroy this man for not being able to read. Like, what type of person are you? You know? And that and goes back to, like, the culture vulture thing. You know, you destroying your own people. You know, it's saying, like, it's a lot of ignorance out there. So he try to, he don't want to, you know, he bleached his skin and all this other stuff. But he don't want to lose his, he don't want people to say, oh, Charlemagne and change. Charlemagne ain't real no more. So he has to continue to push this ignorant agenda. And, and like, he might not even be that type of person who he is in the interview, but he has to act like that and try to act, you know, ignorant just to, you know, maintain that ignorant audience. It's dumb. It's, it's, it's stupid to me. The whole uh, coon, you're a coon. Every black person to me, would be considered a coon. You know, it's a lot of black people, they're African American. But when you tell them that they're African, they don't want to be considered African. They don't like that. Or like if let's, let's say a black female, for instance, and she may have her hair off, she's not wearing no weave or she's not wearing no tracks or anything like that. And someone compliment her, the first thing she could say is, Oh, I have Indian in my family. I got Indian in my blood. So you proud to say that you got Indian in your blood when they compliment your head. But if somebody say your head nappy or you got African or you like an African or your head, you know, you got African hair or something like that, you get offended and you don't like that. So you're not proud of your roots. You're not proud where you come from. That would be considered a coon to me. It's like you that came over here. You forgot who you are. Like if you're working for a job and you change your persona and you change your the way you talk to appease these people in the corporate America who's of a different race. Let's say you're black and they're white and you have to change your voice and you have to act a certain way. You're a coon. You know, I think that whole, every, nothing matters anymore. Like all that stuff that we live by the rules, we just, it's like, it's like liquor. They, they say you can't drink liquor, but then they look down on people who smoke weed, you know, and you look down on that. But Either both of them are drugs, but they made it cool in society to to drink liquor and they made it legal. So you think that smoking weed is wrong when both of them are wrong. Either way, they're both drugs. You call somebody a crackhead and say, oh, they're on drugs. You're on drugs, too. So my whole thing with, you know, Troy Ave, the whole snitching thing, that thing is, is, is dead to me. You know, and I could totally understand he's a man. Like at the end of the day, he has kids. And I understand from the street, the street level, I understand that. But it's dead to me. I don't even I don't even take people serious in the streets no more. Like I don't take nobody serious who has to live that talk about, oh, I live this street life. Like I was having this conversation about the Jay-Z Jay 444 album. It's about mentality and growth. It's a lot of people who still stuck. And the lower and, you know, people who still have a, a, a mindset, a low IQ, and it's people who are trying to grow mentally in life. And, you know, when you try to grow mentally in life, it's people who still, they look at you, you're trying to help them. You're trying to say, look, hey, I'm trying to help you get to this next level. I'm trying to help you. I'm, I'm showing you the ins and outs, showing you this, blah, blah, blah. I'm showing you this. But that person to be like, nah, man, you think you better than me. 
or you looking down or like the whole concept. I had a conversation with a guy about, you know, as far as like working. He said, well, I seen you in a uniform before because I was like, bro, like we have this slave mentality, like people working a job. So he said, well, you work the job. I said, OK. And I had a slave mentality at the time. That don't mean I'm looking down on people. That mean I'm trying to inform you and enlighten you to something for the betterment of yourself. Like, it, you know, help me. You know, if anything, I will be the one to be able to tell you based off experience. You tell me that you've never worked in the you never been in the workforce force before. So I've got to see both sides. You only seen one side. So I'm going to tell you from both sides and I'm going to try to help encourage you and enlighten you. I'm not going to look down on you. You've never worked for a job. If you say you've never worked for a company, so you wouldn't be able to tell no one to continue to work a job. Because, like I said, it's mentally draining. You have someone constantly telling you what to do, when to do it. You have to act a certain way if somebody have holds your life in their hands to be able to fire you when they want to. Who wants to live like that? And could just be able to just control you and, and do what you and do what they tell you. I, I've lived both sides. So I will be able to be the one who would tell you, hey, look, I've experienced somewhat of freedom, somewhat. Now I can help you. I can enlighten you and show you the game. I've seen that side. Now I'm going to show you a better side. The perfect example would be a quote that I heard Dane Dash say, you know, that's like a slave that's escaped the plantation who has become free trying to, somebody that's still on the plantation, trying to tell that person how to be a free man. You can't do that. You know, if I've been on the plantation and I left and I'm a free man now, I can tell you how I was on the plantation and now how it is now that I'm a free person. Yes, I say I have multi, say I seen you with a uniform on, so you work the job. So with that, that doesn't mean I'm looking down on people who have jobs. What I'm saying is the mentality that we have, we have to change it and help us get better. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to uplift you. But you are so insecure that you think I'm trying to put you down and others down. And people, he's, he's like, well, people who work those jobs, they need a plan A or, or, or they need a plan B or, you know, it's nothing wrong with working the job, blah, blah, blah. But if you work in the, let's say a person who works a job, right? Majority of those people don't have a plan B. So you're busy going hard for this job and working hard with this job. If you get fired, you're done. You're in the streets. You don't have a plan B. So then what you going to do? So you never have a plan B. Like this, this is my thing. The whole, the concept, the rules that we live by, that society has put on us and people over the other, in, in other countries live a totally different way, but we live by these rules. It's like a religion, you know, and you don't have to live like that. And, and I've understood that since you don't, the people who don't live like that are much more free mentally. They're not rushing the drugs to escape their problems. They're not waiting for Friday so they can be off. You got what I'm saying? So my thing is, you know, I commend Troy Ave. He's growing as a person. You know, he has to do what's better for him. I thought the video was a great video, extremely dope video. I really liked that video, Too Legit to Quit. I thought that was a dope, a great, I thought it was a great song. I thought the video was dope. The visual was extremely, I love the, the whole cartoon uh, Boondocks kind of feel to it. And Boondocks was one of my favorite shows, by the way. And I just felt like it was just a, a great video. It was great content. You know, the song would have been out, you know. And of course, Charlemagne going to come out on a podcast and explain, you know, as a reason or make up an excuse as to why he didn't come to that interview. He wasn't there present for that interview. And I'm pretty sure Troy Ave doesn't have, you know, a PR team around him to tell him you can't say this or you can't say that because he already seems as though he doesn't have a filter, but he know just based off uh, legal situations that he can say certain things and can't say certain things. But at the same time, I think the real reason Charlemagne wasn't there is because he couldn't face that truth. He couldn't live with what he said because it wasn't probably a legitimate reason as to why he gave him Dunk the other day. And Charlemagne was the one who pushed the agenda that Troy F said that he was the new pop. He was the one who created that energy and put that out there in the world and, and he put the spin on to it. And that's what caused the big distraction 
that could have been positive things out of that interview that people could have learned from. The song had been out for a while and he just decided to put the video out and I'm pretty sure people ran with it. You know, middle finger from the stand. You know, you never know. Like, and I'm not going to say that Tax Stone, the person who came to kill Troy Ave, had something to do with Tax Stone, but you know, you never know what's, what happened, and that could be something that led to him feeling like, hey, ain't no, ain't no street code, ain't no streets, ain't no none of this. So, it is what it is. I gotta do what's best for me and for my sons, because like he said, at the end of the day, his sons gonna be like, that's stupid, like. Why you do that? Why the people in that's talking about the street stuff and having wars and all that, they're going to be done, moved on with their life and moved on to someone else. And those streets people not there, like when he in court and all that. So I, I wholeheartedly, you know, commend him and everything that he was saying. And I think that Troy Ave is just a great artist. I think that a lot of people are still are so ignorant and they, they see so much ignorance. So when they see someone who's extremely honest, they don't know how to accept it. You know, somebody who speaks their truth and who they are. Because if you are around a person, if you listen to Troy Ave, he's I, 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 me, me, me. You always hear him talk about himself. But if you're around a person who constantly talk about someone else all the time, then you need to ask yourself, do I need to be around this person? Because this person ain't doing nothing for themselves. They're not talking about their problems and how they can correct their problems. Or they're not talking about how we can fix society or fix our community. They're just talking about destroying others.